Hello, in this video, we're going to learn about vectors in a plane. What are vectors? I really like vectors because they are very similar to matrices and we'll see that in the next few videos. But first, let's learn exactly what vectors are. They have a, um, they're direct line segment, okay? And they have two components, which you're gonna see. And so if we have this direct line segment here, we have the initial point A and the ending point B. Um, we refer to the ending point as a terminal point and we notate these vectors very similar. You see that this looks like a ray and that is how we notate vectors as well. V for vector equals AB with a line on top of it. Now you're not gonna see this notation very often. Most times you're just gonna see V, but you have to understand that whenever you see your vector, the first point is the, the far, first part is the initial point and the second part is the terminal. So magnitude and direction are the two components of a vector. So magnitude is distance. How long is this vector? And to determine the distance, we're gonna use the distance formula from geometry. So the square root of my X component subtracted squared plus my Y component subtracted squared. So x2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared, all under the square root. Now we also can determine the direction. And to determine the direction, we're going to simply use slope. m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So these are all things that you already know and that you're extremely familiar with. So let's look at an example where we find the magnitude and the direction. So we're given a vector A um, is 3, 1, and B is 5, 4. So we know that our vector, that A is our initial point and B is our um, terminal point. So let's see what this looks like. A is 3, 1, so out 3, up 1. And B is 5, 4, so out 5, up 4. And then we have a vector that looks like this, okay? So that's what our vector looks like, and we're going to find, first we're going to find the magnitude. So to find the magnitude, we have to use direction. Remember, that's going to be our x components squared plus the difference of our y components squared. Okay, so we have x of 1, y sub 1, x of 2, y sub 2. So we have x sub 2 is 5 minus x sub 1, which is 3 squared, plus y sub 2, which is 4, minus y sub 1, which is 1 squared. 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 4 is 12, and the square root of 12 is 2 square root of 3. So that's what we know the distance to be. Now, our magnitude is going to be slope. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So 4 minus 1 all over 5 minus 3. 4 minus 1 is 3, 5 minus 3 is 2. So our direction is in the positive um, direction, so 3, 2. And that makes sense if we look at our picture to the right of your screen. Okay, I did make an error. 4 plus 9 is 13, not 12. So our distance is simply the square root of 13. And if you really want to know what that is, uh, almost that is approximately 3.6, um, 3.606 units. Um, sometimes if we're talking about distance, it's better to actually see that number instead of the square root of a number. So that was a correction. 4 plus 9 is 13, not 12. So let's move on. All right, component form is how you're going to see vectors written most often. Current, um, component form, we need the initial point to be 0, 0. And um, our notation is going to be V1, comma V2. It's just going to look like an order pair, with the exception that we can see that instead of using parentheses, we have these um, angled brackets. Okay, that's what lets you know it's a vector. So what if we don't have, what if we have a vector where the initial point is not 0, 0? Well, 
we can take the terminal point and subtract, subtract the initial point to get component form. So we're going to see that here in just a second. Example two, we're going to find the component form and the length of the vector. So here we have the um, P is negative 1, 4, and Q is 6, 2. So we know that P is the initial and Q is the terminal. Therefore, our component form is going to be initial, um, terminal minus initial. So 6, 2 minus negative 1, 4. So our vector is going to be 7, 6 minus a negative 1 is 7, 2 minus 4 is a negative 2. So there is our component form. So now we need to find the length. So to find length, we are going to find the magnitude. So length equals magnitude. Okay, and to do that, we are simply going to use this information right here. And now it's going to become much simpler. So our magnitude of V, there's our notation right there, two absolute value bars on each side is what represents magnitude. Um, now, we don't need to subtract anything because we know it's X of 2 minus X of 1, but we only have one X value. So we just say 7 squared plus negative 2 squared. Notice I use parentheses. It's very important. Um, if you don't use parentheses, you're going to get the wrong answer um, because it would give you a negative 4 here instead of a positive 4. So we have 49 plus 4, and 49 plus 4 is 53. And so that is um, the length of our vector. So... If we want to know that in decimal form, we're going to get 7.28 units. Okay, so that is finding the component form and then finding the length. So if you're given component form initially, this is how you now find the length is by using this um, way that we found magnitude. Length, magnitude, distance, all are um, interchangeable words in terms of vectors. Oh, I was going to graph it originally and show y'all, but I guess not. Now. Okay, unit vector. So a unit vector is in relation to the unit circle, and that means that the terminal point is going to fall in the unit circle, and the initial point is going to be at the um, origin, but if you're given a component vector, I'm going to show you how to use this find the unit vector. So when you're given a component vector, you're going to um, divide the component vector by the magnitude. So example three, we have five negative three as our component vector. Okay, they already gave it to us. But we know, so we already have the top part of this formula, but we need the magnitude. So to find the magnitude, remember, I'm simply going to square my x component Square my y component and add them. So 5 squared plus negative 3 squared. And then I'm going to square root that. So 5 squared is 15 and negative 3 squared is 9. And the square root of that equals 24. 24. Because 25. 24. 25 plus 9 is 34, I'm so crazy, 34. So now our unit vector being notated by a u, that was a terrible u, let's rewrite that, is our vector 5, negative 3, all over the square root of 34. Okay, so there's our unit vector right there. Um, let's talk about linear combination. So it is like the standard um, unit vector. It's kind of like a standard form. So if I gave you, um, okay, so 
If I give you an initial point and a terminal point, the first thing you need to do is you need to get component form. So that would be our first step is to find component form, which is what we did right before we found the unit vector. So we're going to take our um, we're going to take our terminal point and subtract our initial point. So we have 2, 4, minus 4, 1. So 2 minus 4, we're going to notate this as V. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And 4 minus 1 is 3. So now we need to write the linear combination. So linear combination is where it's just another way of writing a vector. So we call this component form. So we've seen component form right here. This V equals and then the angle brackets. But linear combination is another very common form. All we're going to do is we're going to say still V and we're going to pull out the negative 2 and it's going to pair with an I plus 3 and it pairs with J. So your key here is knowing that your X coordinate pairs with your I and your Y coordinate pairs with your J. So if I were to give you a linear combination that said 5I minus 7J, you would know that that would translate to 5 comma negative 7 as your vector. So in this example, we had the component and we went to linear combination. And the example at the bottom of the page, we had com um, linear combination and we went to component. So that is um, linear combination. It's that simple. It's just another way of writing vectors. Okay, the last thing we're going to discuss is the direction angles, finding the angle of a vector. And to do that, we're going to use tangent, and that's going to be y over x because we know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I give you the vector 5i plus 6j, first we know that this can also be written as 5 comma 6, okay? And either way it's written, we know that 5 is our x and 6 is our y. 5 is our x, 6 is our y. So whichever way it gives it, you can interpret the x and the y you don't have to convert it to either one, but you can if you would like to. If you prefer component form, which is my favorite form, this form right here, um, then you can always write it in component form. Both are correct. So we know that tangent theta equals y over x. And to get to our theta, we need to use inverse trig functions, which we learned about previously. So you're simply going to type this into your calculator, into Desmos or whatever calculator you have, and do tangent inverse of 6 over 5, and it's going to give you 50.194. Now, whenever I got this number, my calculator were in degrees, so I'm going to put a degree symbol up here, because if I were doing radians, I would need pi in that, and Anyway, so make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Okay, degree mode. Um, so that you can get this. Now, if you see answer choices that have pi, you can change your calculator to radian mode. You're going to get a decimal, and then you can see which answer choice equals that decimal. So if you're doing that and you have um, questions, please be sure to ask. But that concludes this video on vectors in a plane. And in the next video, we're going to start actually working a lot more with vectors. So look forward to that video, and I'll see you then.